In the 39th year of the 20th century came the great disillusionment. With infinite complacence, people went to and fro over the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, spinning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. There the beast was, standing before me like a statue, as the red African sun was beginning to set behind me. I slowly raised my rifle, and bang! The bullet entered through the neck and shoulder, piercing the heart. I was once killed by gunshot in my off-off Broadway play, One Shot at Love. It was on in the summer of 34. You remember that summer, Mr. Smith? <laughs> But he was magnificent, Miss Sullivan. Magnificent. The strongest and fiercest rhino out of the herd. Crash, actually. A herd can be used to describe, say, a group of elephants. A crash is the correct term for the rhinoceros. A common mistake. A common mistake. Yes, well, he was a beauty. The most magnificent beast my brother Johnny and I had ever seen. Yes, well, uh, <clears throat> thank you all again for coming, especially in light of recent circumstances. Uh, here, here, to, to Jonathan Bailey. May he rest in peace to a nice, quiet evening among family and friends. Mr. Jones? Jones! What's the big idea? The dial, Mr. Smith, the dial. Have you heard? I beg your pardon, but what do you suppose you're doing? Do you not see that we have guests? You forgive me for butting in, but none of that matters now. What in the devil is this all about? There's been an invasion. The Martians have landed. An invasion at dinner? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most terrifying thing I've, I've ever witnessed. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Someone, something, I see turning out of that black hole two luminous discs of the eyes. It might be a face. Could that be them? But heavens, something wriggling out of the shadow of a gray snake. Joan! I mean, Mrs. Bailey. They look like tentacles to me. Am I late? Have you heard the news? The men from Mars have come to destroy us. As if the men from Earth aren't doing a fine enough job. I wasn't it. I'm so glad you could join us, Mrs. Bailey. Can I take your coat? I'm fine, thank you. Charles, Mr. Bailey, do you mind? What do we do now? We don't believe all this, do we, Collins? Well, I do not know exactly. Where are they supposed to have landed? Grover's Mill, New Jersey. Ah, huh. near Princeton. Well, that's only an hour from here. Hour? That's awfully close. How horrible. And I am sure they will come for me next. Let's hope they come for some of us. Don't you worry, my dear Miss Sullivan. They'd have to go through me first. <laughs> now, don't blow your wigs. We shan't let this interruption ruin a perfectly lovely evening. Yes, Mary, we shan't let a catastrophic disaster like this ruin your perfect little dinner. Playing music again, you see? Mustn't be serious. We can all come to our seats. Are you sure I can't take your coat, Mrs. Bailey? No, I'm fine. We are bringing you an eyewitness account of what's happening on the Wilmoth. We thought she wouldn't show, did we not? Do you think I'm making a good impression on Professor Collins? She should still be in mourning. If I do make a good impression, that would hold a lot of weight at the university. If you died in an African safari, it would only be proper for me to avoid social duties such as this. Right? What are you bumping gums about? <sighs> Just go take care of Jones. I'll take care of everything else. <sighs> Jones. <laughs> That'll be a trip for biscuits. Forgive me, Jones, but I don't suppose you plan on staying now, do you? No, I couldn't possibly eat at a time like this. We should secure the house. Secure the house? What a fine idea. Believe you or me, if 
anybody's up to the task as I. Charles, you won't mind. Well, uh, I, if you'll excuse me. How brave. How out of character. What do you make of all this, Collins? Oh, uh, it is fascinating, isn't it? I have often wondered whether or not we share the universe with extraterrestrials, and if one day we might find them in our telescopes. Now, it seems they have found us first. They've come to destroy us, haven't they? They will surely kill us all. I can just see the headlines now. Beautiful young actress dies horrible death, similar to her gruesome death in the musical Sing Me to Sleep. My husband died in a musical called Safari in Africa with Bill Bailey. Ah, <laughs> uh, I uh, do not believe there is reason to panic, Miss Sullivan. They must be of superior intelligence and would likely seek out a negotiation or perhaps a partnership with our planet. Yes, a partnership with our planet. A partnership with our planet! Of course, well, that settles it then. Oh, Mr. Collins, if I may disagree, surely they'd be jealous of our planet and want it for themselves. The man on the radio said it himself. Mr. Jones, that may be a common theory among the masses, but most of us in academia do not believe they would be threatening or destructive. Strike them head on. Lord, they're turning into flames. Ah! The whole field caught up by the woods of the The, the gas tank, tank, the automobiles spreading everywhere. It's coming this way now, about 20 yards to my right. A war they want, a war they will get. Ladies and gentlemen, the war? Oh, gee. Oh, gee. These Martians are picking a fight with the wrong planet, as long as I want it. I never go anywhere without wearing my iron. I suggest we arm ourselves. You couldn't defend my husband from a rhino, you see? And yet you think you can defend an entire planet from an army of Martians? Don't you believe everything you hear, Miss Sullivan? You're in my capable hands. I shall check the grounds. Continue now with our piano interlude. Well, you sit down, Mr. Jones. Do sit down, as you are a guest now, I must insist on it. Well, if we all must die, at least they'll off him first. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just been handed a message that came in from Grover's Mill by telephone. Just one moment, please. I actually think I might go get some fresh air. If you'll, uh, excuse me one moment. Martial law prevails throughout New Jersey and eastern Pennsylvania. The police and army reserves are unable to control the mad flight. Mrs. Bailey, meet our neighbor, Mr. Jones. At this time, we take you to Washington for a special broadcast on the national emergency. Citizens of the nation, I shall not try to conceal the gravity of the situation that confronts the country, nor the concern of your government in protecting the lives and property of its people. However, I wish to impress upon you private citizens and public officials, all of you, the urgent need of calm and resourceful action. It's been a long time since the two of us have been alone together. Lorraine, I, I, I hope you're having a nice time. Barry and I, uh, Must we talk Barry about my I... sister right now? Can't we talk about you, darling? About us? I don't think there's anything to say, is there? Why didn't you wait for me, Charlie? What are you doing? You told me not to. You're the one who decided we should end things. You're the one who left. I had to. There's no life here for an actress. The Big Apple was the only place for me, you see. That doesn't mean I stopped having feelings for you. Do you still have feelings for me? I did, and, 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 and I didn't, and I didn't know how you felt. I did what I did, and it's done, so now what can we do? Well, probably nothing, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I don't think so, I, it's, oh, The it's, world it's, it's, is what, ending, the Charlie, the men from Mars are here. Don't you want to have one last thrill? Do you even have the backbone for it?
Mr. Jones, your food is getting cold. There are a lot of windows in this room. I suppose it would be wise to relocate to somewhere less conspicuous. The basement, perhaps. Perhaps the basement. The basement? We mustn't go there. The parlor will be perfectly safe and the gentlemen can have cigars while the women take tea. What do you think, Collins? Would the parlor do? I suppose. They just set 40 men on fire, but to be sure they'd be in the habit of knocking before burning down houses. It's me, Bill. I say that again. Bill? At the back? Perhaps it's the Martian men. Could they be impersonating him, Mr. Collins? It's possible. They could have all sorts of technology. You forgive me, but I won't have any of my guests left. Mary, Mary, no! Come in, Mr. Bailey. Are you quite all right? Am I all right? <laughs> all right? None of us are all right. They're out there, aren't they? There you are, Mr. Bailey. I was so worried about you. Are we quite sure that this is Mr. Bailey? Looking at him, I'm fairly convinced he's not human. I'll be damned Mr. if- Mr. Bailey. If the Martians could travel such a lengthy distance and impersonate human voices, perhaps they could. It would be fascinating, wouldn't it? Yes, fascinating. I see this is absurd. I will have my cigar now. If you all follow me. Is everybody having an okay time? I think everybody's doing fine, Mary. Okay. Just don't worry about everything. That wasn't too bad, was it? I think we're fine. Okay. The jello mold was a little bit off, but it still it tasted okay. Yes, it tasted okay. fine. Could you get the scars from down? Yes, I can. Okay. All right, now isn't this better? I shall prepare the tea. If you'll. I'll give you a hand, Mrs. Smith. If that's all right. Oh, dear me. I'm afraid I left something in the dining room. Oh, Miss Sullivan. A beautiful young woman such as yourself should never be alone at a time like this. Aren't you a dear? <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. Mr. Smith, <laughs> would you be so kind as to escort me? <laughs> I'm too afraid to go alone. I suppose I shall, Miss Sullivan. And that 
Tread carefully, Mr. Bailey. I believe she may have it out for you. What do you want about? I, I apologize. I usually don't concern myself with other people's affairs, but the way she looks at you, do you suppose she blames you for the death of her husband? Blame me? The audacity. I did everything in my power to protect him. I would never even consider such an outlandish idea, but I feel obligated to tell you, she's packing heat. If a bim with a gat makes you uneasy, you can cheese it, Pally. Times like this sort of make a man think. Why did I put that serving tray? It'd be a real shame if the world ended tonight and a fellow didn't get to say the things he has been longing to say. Things he has been afraid to say. Three cups. The men wouldn't want tea, would they? Well, no. No? Three. No. Mary? No. Oh, I wish you knew. Thanks, the sugar bowl. I do not suppose I moved it. I suppose, under the circumstances... Ah, uh, there it is. I could tell you. Oh, I, I must tell you. Are you having a nice time, Mr. Collins? Uh, I... That's done. Thank you for your assistance, Mr. Collins. I shall take it from here. Rose up and became a man. A man armed with a large... Stop. Why can't we all stay in the same room for longer than a minute? You're right. There's safety in numbers. Someone should go get them immediately and bring them back. Yes, Mr. Jones, send them along before the tea gets cold. Go on, make yourself useful. You would not mind if I stuck with something a bit stronger, would you? Shift range, 31 meters. 31 meters. Projection. Fire. Fight. Jones? Jones, wait. It's not what you think. You don't understand! Warning. Poisonous black smoke pouring in from Jersey marshes. Reaches South Street. Gas masks useless. Urge population to move into open spaces. Automobiles use... Why must we keep listening to that dreadful broadcast? 24. We must stay informed. Smoke now spread... Mr. Jones? Don't you think you ought to be... Leaving us now? Mr. Smith! Yes, I'm afraid I must put my foot down! Jones! Out! Scram! What is the meaning of this? I saw him kiss Miss Sullivan and now he wants to kick me to the curb! Well, I'm not going anywhere! Not with those things out there! Now, I know that I'm not wanted here. But I refuse to go outside! Now, if you excuse me, I shall make my way to the back room. Scouting planes report enemy machines now three in number. Increasing speed northward, kicking over houses and cruising their evident haste to form a conjunction. Mary. Mary. 
machine's also sighted by telephone operator east of Middlesex within 10 miles of Plainfield. Here's a bulletin from Winston Field, Long Island. A fleet of army bombers carrying heavy explosives flying north of the of enemy. You brazen little hussy. Haven't you done us all enough harm? Just a moment, please, ladies and gentlemen. You want to talk about doing harm, do you? Perhaps we should discuss what happened in Africa. If you hadn't talked him into going. But there's more to it, isn't there? I'm sure I don't know what you're getting at. It wasn't an accident at all, was it? This is outrageous. You let him die! All for what? For money? I see. You think that I sent my brother out in a Chicago overcoat for some dough? Yes! Money, dough, rhino, moolah, whatever godforsaken name you want to give it. Do you deny it? Of course I deny it! This is preposterous! I will not stand here and take these accusations! I shall smoke my cigar elsewhere. You will excuse me! particular evening, October 30th, the Crosley service estimated that 32 million people were listening in on radios. I suppose someone should speak with Jones. Of course, Jones should be spoken to, but a man should do it. That's where men like you come in, see? We raid the museums. We'll even spy on the Martian. Mr. Jones, I've had it! Your behavior tonight is simply unacceptable. Don't you think it'd be best if you just go home? No. No, no, no. It's too late for that now. I know I made a mess of things, but you need me. I can protect you. You've ruined everything! All I wanted was to have a nice dinner, and you burst in here with your Martians and your yap and your guns. I've had enough! Imagine having one of them lovely things with a heat ray wide and free. We'd turn it on Martians, we'd turn it on men. We'd bring everybody down on their knees. Hollins, something dreadful's happened. I saw. You did? What have I done? What do I do? Are you going to turn me in? No. No? Well, first of all, law enforcement is preoccupied with the invasion at the moment. Second of all, I would never do anything to cause you harm. You wouldn't? Why? Because. Well, I love you, that's why. You do? I was longing to tell you, it was never the right moment. Here. I, I shan't tell anyone. I vow to protect you, no matter what. That is all. One can do when one is in love. Well, you shan't tell anyone about that either. Rise like a line of new towers on the city's west side. This is the end now. Smoke comes out, black smoke drifting over the city. People in the streets see it now. They're running toward the East River, thousands of them, dropping in like rats. Now the smoke's spreading faster. It's reached Times Square. People are trying to run away from it, but it's no use. They, they're falling like flies. <laughs> Jones is 
dead, shot in the chest. I demand to know which one of you imbeciles pulled the trigger. Perhaps the Martians? How do we know it wasn't you? You killed before, you could kill again. Yes, yes, it could have been you. Nonsense. And what of you, Mrs. Bailey? I know you have something hidden inside of that coat pocket of yours. You killed Mr. Jones. Murder! Bailey, put down your gun! It wasn't him, Charles. It wasn't. Oh, don't you dare threaten the man I love! Tonight, the Columbia Broadcasting System and its affiliated stations, Coast to Coast, has brought you The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, the 17th in its weekly series of dramatic broadcasts featuring Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on the air. Next week, we present a dramatization of three famous short stories. This is the Columbia <laughs> Broadcasting System. <laughs> What is there to live for? Well, there won't be any more concerts for a million years or so and no nice little dinners at restaurants. If it's amusement you're after, I guess the game's up. What is there left? Life, that's what. I want to live. Yeah, and so do you. We're not going to be exterminated. Exterminated.